Okay, don't mind my morning hair and lack thereof makeup. Um, I haven't done a vlog in a while. Um, I've been working on my blog though, so if you want to check that out, it's violetways.com. Again, that's violetways.com. Some people have asked me, um, why Violet Ways? Uh, well, first off, my grandmother, she is definitely one of my um, best friends. Uh, I look up to her. She really has um, come a long way in her life growing up poor. She put her way through college. Uh, she ended up retiring from the government. So I look up to her a great deal. And um, so that was her name. But violet is also an extraordinary color. Um, if you look at violet, it can be light, dark. Um, it's just an extraordinary color. Um, so that um, extraordinary, um, light, dark, and then ways um, because a way of life. So it could be a light way, a dark way, you know, whatever. Um, so that's how I came up with the name for my blog. Um, and pretty much it's to help people grieve. Um, I also have included some things in there. I'm going to start doing like some recipes and stuff like that. Um, some spots to go where you, uh, it's very little to pay and it's beautiful with nature. Me, myself, um, I like to save money. I like to view nature. Um, so it's pretty much a blog about me. Um, if you could have a journal set up about yourself, that would be what this blog's about. But um, in January, I lost my fiance um, unexpectedly, and the blog has really helped me. Writing about him, it's keeping his memories alive, but also helping me deal with what I'm feeling. Um, and the days vary, believe me. Um, some days I'm quite with it, and other days are like a tornado of emotions. Uh, I'm overwhelmed, I uh, can't stop crying, I don't wanna get out of the bed, um, and that, those are the days that I have to push myself a little bit more. A lot of people say to me, how do you keep the strength together? Strength is something we find within, and the way that I see it is if I don't get out of the bed and do something, and go to work, and make money, and clean my house, and take care of my animals and my children, Who's going to do it? It won't get done. Um, so I think that strength is pretty much just you pushing yourself. Um, you know, the way that I look at it, the mindset that I have is if I don't do it, it won't get done. Um, maybe that's good that the only thing that I have to depend on anymore is myself. Um, because, you know, that's hard. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. That's hard. <clears throat> knowing that you have to keep a house running with five animals and two children and that if you slip, boom, you're falling. But I've learned that falling is not the hard part. It's the recovery of it. Um, you know, I think that I was blessed um, that I ever met Brandon. Uh, you know, we went to school together, so I had no, knew Brandon for a long time, but that we reconnected. Sorry, that's my clock letting me know what time it is. Um, <clears throat> it should stop in a minute. I don't know if I can. Can I reverse this? I guess not. Oh. My pig is over there sound asleep. I'm a sound asleep over there. And that's a picture of my Brandon when he was in school on the wall over there. Okay, so anyway, back to where we were. Um, so I was blessed to have ever felt that love. Um, I think that timing is something that God had perfectly planned out. Brandon was came into my life <clears throat> exactly when I needed him. Um, and I, And I came into his exactly when he needed me. Um, for people who aren't very religious, um, I would say sit down and read the Bible. Have you read the Bible? Have you ever had anything extraordinary happen, a person come into your life um, that taught you so much? Um, because I think that when you have something like that happen, you definitely become a believer. Um, you know, 
I lost my first love, um, my son's father, my first husband. He passed away a couple of years ago in a car accident. And that changed our lives. Um, it took my son from a, a boy into a man overnight um, because he was overwhelmed with grief and emotions and he didn't know how to experience those emotions. Uh, he did not express them, I should say. Um, so he learned a lot there. And then Brandon came into our lives. And Brandon, <laughs> I was, <laughs> here's a short story for you real quick. He, um, he used to, he had top dentures and he was very self-conscious about them. But once he warmed up to me and my kids, he used to take those dentures out and he'd walk around gumming it and say, it's Charlie Wally time, it's Charlie Wally time. And this morning it was a little cold and my dog was laying at my feet and um, I said to her, uh, it's a little chilly willy, isn't it? And as soon as I said it, I thought about him just hopping around laughing, saying it's chilly willy time. Um, but those memories, they will forever, ever, ever be in my mind and I will share them because um, he blessed my life and with his blessings, um, it brought me to life. Um, it's something he showed me love. Um, he showed me inconsiderate, inconsiderable amounts of love. Um, I had been in abusive relationship after abusive relationship, and I've, I've come to the conclusion that it was because I had no self-love. Um, if you don't love yourself, if you don't know your worth, you will continue. You, there's a, a, a quote that says, you are what you attract. Um, I think that if you don't value yourself, you attract people who won't value you as well. Um, and there'll be people that come to you with sob stories about how they had a bad childhood and blah, 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 and that's why they're abusive. No, 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 no. After a certain point in their life, there comes a time when someone needs to accept responsibility for their own actions. That childhood BS, it only gets you through so much. So if you're telling me you can beat on a woman because you watched an abusive father, Okay, so we're, we're letting that history repeat itself and that's okay. No, you are hurting another human being, someone who loves you. You don't hurt people you love, okay? I, that didn't click for a long time with me and I didn't love myself. So I was attracting what I saw myself as, which was not very high standards. Um, so I spent a couple of years alone and I found myself. You know, I, I went and saw, like, Centralia, Pennsylvania, which is really cool if you haven't been there. Um, I went and took pictures in nature, went to waterfalls, uh, just mended spots in me, I think, that were broken. And then I started to perceive myself in a new light. Um, now, when you perceive yourself as a higher value, you're going to attract that. And... I have to say that that time alone let me realize what I was going to settle for in a relationship and what I was not. I was no longer settling for the men that tell you the lies, never follow through with their promises, the ones that beat you and then the next day they're so sorry, they love you, they love you, they love you, they'd never do it again. No, do not settle for that, ladies. You're better than that. Find you. Find what you want. Do you want a man that's going to treat you good? Do you want a man that's going to cook you dinner? Do you want a man that's going to help you do laundry, fold laundry, rub your feet at night, give you kisses, tell you that you're beautiful, love you, love you, love you? Then you need to learn to love you. In order for you to find that love, love yourself first. When you put yourself first, you love God and you love yourself. You have faith, then... And only then will you will doors start to open that you didn't know would open. The night I met Brandon, again, because <laughs> we had known each other from school, and I was walking across the parking lot, at going into the Legion because my uncle's band was playing, and he turned around because he was getting in his car, and he said, oh my God, you're beautiful. And I said, stop. 
I, you know, I knew what I wanted and I wasn't going to have some man schmooze me with some fancy words that, you know, I said, cut it out. I said, you know me, cut it out. He goes, I'll buy you a drink. We went in, we talked, 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 talked for several hours, had a couple drinks. He met my family. He went to leave and I gave him a kiss, a goodbye kiss, but I thought, oh, I'm probably not going to see this guy again. I was having fun. I gave him a good kiss. We had a very good kiss. And he called me as soon as he left and he was like, I don't care if it was the Empire State Building, I would knock it down. He's, he was cussing in his voicemail. He's like, I just, he's like, what do you do when something is that awesome? And then that was it. From then on, he was by my side. We told each other everything about our past. I think that that is great. Uh, when you build a relationship on stability, you're honest because lies will catch up to you. So do not lie. Do not lie. They will come out and it will be bad. So always be honest with that person. If you're honest, honesty is going to get you a lot farther than lying. Because when somebody finds out that you've lied to them, you've now taken trust and you've broke it. And it takes a long time to regain somebody's trust once it's gone. I know. I've been there. I've done that. I've had people do that to me and I still can't trust them. I still can't. And it's been years. Once you tell someone something that you only want to tell them and then you know I, I second guess that too why do we tell people things that we don't want anyone else to know because I almost think it's human nature that they like to gossip and tell stories and stuff and it's you're just to talk then tell God write it down get it off your chest but if you don't want anyone else knowing then maybe we shouldn't be sharing secrets like that or things that we don't want other people to know but if this is the man that you think you want to marry, that you think you want to spend your forever with, tell them things that you've never told anybody. Share that with them. If they are loyal and honest and respectful, they are going to take those secrets with them and not tell anybody else. But we all have those pasts that, you know, there's skeletons there. And Brandon and I, we sat down, we told each other everything. Everything. Everything childhood secrets, things our parents did we didn't like, things that scarred us for life, and we built a foundation off of that. That is your foundation. That trust is a critical part to the house that you're building with somebody, you know? And if you build that strong foundation, you're going to have a lasting, loving relationship. I can tell you, since losing Brandon, I've had to rebuild me. Um, and what I mean by that is, is that um, Brandon was so good to me. I went to work, I came home, and, and everything was done. The house was clean, the laundry was done, the dinner was made. Um, and then we just had time for us. And, and it was amazing. We had an amazing life. This man woke up every morning, and the first thing that he did, if I wasn't home, was he texted me, I love you. That was his morning ritual. I love you. And then he started his day. Um, I was the first thing that he thought about as soon as he woke up and the last thing he thought about before he went to bed. And to me, that's something. That's love. Um, he put lotion on my feet every night. But it wasn't just, you know, the things that he did for me. It was what we did for each other. You know, Brandon had really bad anxiety and I do not. I am blessed that I do not have that anxiety. Um, but I'm the kind of rational thinker so um, if you tell me it's gonna storm tomorrow I'll be like okay this too shall pass um, but he'd be like oh my gosh it's gonna knock down this that and the other I gotta clean this I gotta put this away you know it's gonna ruin something you know and his anxiety would get going and I would be his mediator I would calm him down and we just balanced each other out and it was a love like no other um, so ladies don't settle for those ones that are going to tell you what you want to hear. You wait for the one that loves you for you unconditionally and proves it every day. Not that you have to prove love, but it helps to show it. It does. Because that love is everlasting. He may be gone from my sight, but he's with me every day. He's with me every day. And my stories that I tell and my actions, 
Uh, if somebody likes a certain thing, if somebody dances a certain way, says something, it reminds me of him. And I share those stories. I share those because that was the joy of my life. And even though he's not here, he still brings joy to me every day. Every day. But if you're grieving the loss of someone that you love, scream, yell, cry. I don't think I got out of the bed, bed for four days, maybe. Um... I might have gotten out a couple of times because we had arrangements we had to make. But I went right back to bed. And I cried myself to sleep. And I cried all day. And I cried all morning. Cry. Cry it out. It's a grief. It's a gut-wrenching drop you to your knees. Pain. Believe me. It's been three months and I can still cry at the drop of a hat. Because that pain, it doesn't go away. The posts that say it'll go away, no it doesn't. You learn to live with it. You live with it every day. But love to learn to love the memories. Carry them with you. Share them. Cry if you need to. Scream if you need to. There is no time limit on grief. You grieve at your own pace. And that these are things we need to remember. You know? And sharing. Share all you want. Tell the stories. Tell your friends. Start a blog. Start a website like I did, you know? Do what you have to do to help you grieve. But you're also keeping that person alive. You're keeping them alive in the memories, your stories, your love. That love is not going away. That's grief. You are just, it's bottled up love that you want to give to that person. And they're not there for you to give it to. But they're still in your heart. So share share that with people share the wonderful things they did because you know what their memories they'll never die as long as they're in you so this is how I've coped and I hope that it helps you um, please hit me up check out my website violetways.com um, you can also find my um, Facebook violet ways blog um, and I am here to help you. Um, questions, problems, concerns. You want somebody to help coach you through it. You want somebody to listen. You just want to cry, a shoulder, whatever. I'm here for you. Um, and I will be here for anyone who needs me. Thank you.